Yo, what's up YouTube? This is Smooth Cat with Colossal Boxing Talk and today I'm here to bring to you my weekly episode episodic show, Forgotten Fighters, and today my Forgotten Fighter is uh none other than Fearless Freddie Pendleton. As we know, uh Freddie Pendleton, he was um he resides in Miami, Florida, but he was born and raised in Philadelphia. And <coughs> Freddie had a, a record of 47 wins, 35 of his 47 wins by knockout. He lost 26 fights, 7 by KO, and he also um, had 5 draws in his career. So, overall, as we know, Freddie Pendleton, he, he was a guy, he was, <clears throat> he, he was always... He was always the underdog. I, I look at him, and I kind of, I kind of want to call him one of the ultimate underdogs in boxing because he went through so much adversity in his career, where you had people giving up on him, not, not really. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, like I said, you had people giving up on him, not giving him too much of a chance to do things, and you also had him. Um, look, he, he lost some fights that he should have won. But he um, <coughs> mentally he, he might have not been there that night, and he, he he paid the price for it. But with that being said, I know Freddie Pendleton. He okay. He had a fight with a guy named Jimmy Paul when he he was on the verge of contending for uh, for a potential uh, championship fight. And in '85, Jimmy Paul beat him. He um he, he knocked Pendleton down in the sixth and the seventh round. And he also um <coughs> he he just he he, he outclassed um he outclassed uh, Freddie Pendleton that night. But after that, Freddie Pendleton went up went up against a guy named Roberto Mendez, and he stopped. He got a TKO win in eight. Then he went up against one of the uh, toughest challenges in, in his career at that time, Roger Mayweather. And he knocked out Roger Mayweather in the sixth round with a nice shot. Then he went on, like I said, to, um, after that stretch, after that loss to Paul, he won five, four of his last, of his next five fights. <coughs> then he had two decision losses in a row to, to a guy named Joey Oliveira and Shelton LeBlanc. After that, he fought um, Livingston Bramble. That was a draw. And his next six fights, he went on a knock on a KO streak. Uh, even even K even stopping um, <coughs> Livingston Bramble after their uh, majority draw the first time. He stopped Livingston Bramble in the tenth round to KO. Okay, but. To kind of fast forward a little bit, he got his opportunity at a world championship in 1990 against Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. And Pernell <coughs> outboxed him in a very close, competitive, rugged fight. But Pernell proved to be the better of the two, and <coughs> he was victorious that night. So, yet again, <coughs> excuse me, after a loss, Pendleton went on a a seven fight winning streak then he went to fight a guy named um, he went to fight Tracy Spann for the vacant IBF world lightweight title and in that fight Pendleton was knocked down in the first round and in the second round it was a technical decision so it was a draw because I believe it was a clash of, a clash of heads and uh, one and one of them couldn't continue, but they had they had an uh, immediate rematch in early 1993, which <coughs> which Freddie Pendleton went in and he he outboxed Tracy Spann and he won his first official world title. He he had, he had already was the uh, the USBA lightweight title holder, but he won his official first world title, the IBF World Lightweight Championship. Again, in 1993, beating Tracy Spann by unanimous decision, <coughs> he went on to um, to take on Jorge Paez, who uh, a lot of us are familiar with. 
a very exciting come forward fighter. And he, he, he dominated Jorge Baez. He, he dropped Baez in the fourth round. And, and he, he basically he, he took the fight to Baez. <coughs> so, fast forward a little bit. Um, he had a title defense against Rafael Ruelas in a fight where, <coughs> in the first round, Pendleton dropped him twice. And a very very exciting uh, exciting affair, but Ruelas uh, responded from getting dropped early, and and <coughs> he responded well, and basically outboxed um, Pendleton for the remainder of that fight, and won a won a unanimous decision. After that fight, Pendleton tried went up against Giovanni Parisi, who he lost a split decision to in a very very close fight. Okay, and <clears throat> okay, he got another opportunity, and um, he moved up in weight and fought Tony Lopez for the USBA light welterweight title. I no, he defended his USBA light welterweight title. Excuse me, against Tony uh, Lopez in a fight where he stops Tony Lopez in the eighth round. <clears throat> then he took a, a step up to. Uh, Welterweight to try to become the IBF welterweight champion. He uh, he had a fight against Felix Trinidad. It was um fight only went five rounds. It, it was it was competitive, but Trinidad ended up uh, stopping him in a very he ended up stopping him in dramatic fashion. <clears throat> so also with that being said, after that loss, he he moved. Um, <clears throat> He moved back down to 140 to fight for the vacant USBA light welterweight title against Teron Millett in a fight where he lost a, a close unanimous decision in a fight that, that many people feel could have went either way, but to, uh, Teron Millett was the better fighter that night, so he deserved a win. Okay, to uh, kind of fast forward, he, he went and he challenged James Page <coughs> for the WBA welterweight championship. In this fight, it was a fight where James Page was was pretty dominant. He was winning the the vast majority of all the rounds, even um, in, into the end of the round where he stopped um, Pendleton in the 11th round of a great great fight. So Pendleton, after that, he fought. Um, he took on the challenge of facing Ben Tacky in 2000, and Ben Tacky pretty much obliterated um, obliterated him in one round. After that, he um, <coughs> he went and he fought a guy named Horatio Garcia, and Horatio Garcia is a guy. He he was tough. He he was a up up and coming prospect at that time. And <clears throat> and Pendleton got the best of him. TKO'd him in the first round. After that, Pendleton went o went to challenge um, Ricky Hatton for the WBO light welterweight championship, and he was stopped in two rounds. And that is the last fight of Pendleton's career. But out of Pendleton's career, if you do notice that, even even after a loss, he responded. What he, he he responded like like I feel true warrior should. He took the the mindset of okay one loss isn't gonna defeat me. It's not gonna deter me from my goal. And his goal was to continuously get better and keep improving every fight. And that's exactly what he did. Even even when he would lose multiple fights in a row, he would string he would get a string of fights of winning six fights in a row, maybe seven fights in a row. Then he would go. Well, we guess another tough guy or a guy who he was expected to beat, and <clears throat> maybe he got a little overconfident in some fights. But overall, I call uh, Freddie Pendleton, in my opinion, he's the ultimate underdog because no matter what happened, he he, he always came to fight, even in fight, even the, the fights he lost, he always came to fight, and he always came to give you the best effort possible. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to keep you too long.
I just want to go. First, I want to let you guys know that uh, Freddie Pendleton was one of, um, <clears throat> in my opinion, a very underrated fighter. True, yes, he has losses, but losses do doesn't mean that 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 you that you weren't a good fighter. Losses mean that that you fought a lot of a lot of good to top level guys, and those are the guys who, who he lost. So he even he beat some top level guys. So with that being said. Hopefully you guys hit the like button for me. Leave comments in the comment section. I definitely will get back to you at my earliest convenience. Also, um, share the video. Uh, subscribe to to Colossal Boxing Talk. Go over to Facebook, like Colossal Boxing Talk, and you can go to Twitter and follow Twitter or Instagram and follow us at Colossal CBT. This is Smooth Cat, and I'm out. Then this is the end of Forgotten Fighters. <clears throat> featuring Phyllis Freddie Pendleton. Freddie Pendleton. Smooth Cat is out.